part two of the plum rafter build. So what we've done so far is right, clean up the head a little bit. Uh, it was already really clean to start, but basically just degreased it, uh, hit it with some cold bluing. I'm happy with how that came out. Uh, let that cold bluing kind of set up and cure, and then uh, oiled the uh, the head. So that is where the head is currently at. Happy with how it took on uh, took on that color. Um, it's not like a super super dark, but it's it's definitely significantly darker than just like bare steel. Um, let me just grab it here. So like before. I know it's kind of hard comparison when you, you kind of watch it happen in real time, but like this is a, a head that's either sat in vinegar or most likely uh, evaporust, um, maybe vinegar, but I think most likely evaporust. Uh, so that's kind of like a, a slightly rusted-ish, but mostly bare steel look compared to where the uh, the cold bluing is. So if you kind of see them side by side, and this is really without a lot of surface prep. You can kind of see that color difference. Um, like I said, the, my biggest recommendation if you want to do cold bluing is just make sure, wear gloves, make sure you can get as much oil or uh, grease or wax or anything on that surface off as possible. So take a really fine grit sandpaper to it, some steel wool, um, some kind of degreaser or brake cleaner, and get that surface as, as oil-free as possible. Um, if there's already kind of a patina forming on that steel, the cold blue will not take um, as even of a finish. Um, for this particular one, I didn't really care. Um, there's already a little bit of a patina forming in some areas, which is fine. Um, just kind of put the cold bluing on to darken it up a little bit and give it a little bit of extra protection since cold bluing is essentially like a controlled rusting almost. So, yeah. So, enough front of my mouth on that. This is our progress on the handle so far. Got it sitting down on the shoulder pretty much where I want it. Um, when I do the final shaping, I'll probably drop this down a little bit more. Maybe have it sitting, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch lower. After we do like our final shaping and sanding, um, it'll, it'll drop down a little bit further. I will most likely, my goal is to with shaping this up. I'm gonna take some of this, it's kind of shape in the back out of here. So thin that out a little bit more. Gonna make that transition into the back of the handle here more gradual. And also, I'm not a big fan of this kind of like belly this has here so I'll probably thin this out just a little bit too. I'm going to keep the handle a bit thicker. This handle really isn't too thick to start but I'll keep most of the thickness in it and I'll probably shape up this palm swell a little bit. Um, kind of the same line of logic is just kind of hollowing this out just a little bit more just so it fits the uh, fits the curvature of my hand a little bit better. You know, it's like you've got the meaty part of your, your palm there. You want that to kind of nest, nestle into that, that bottom part of that palm swell. So thin that out a little bit. And we should be good to go. Throw a wedge together and uh, hang it. All right, we'll get, uh, get to shaping. I'm not sure how easy it is to see, but that the whole purpose of me putting that C-clamp up top and then resawing is to create that tapered curve. It's not it's not too much, it's not crazy, but it's enough to help get a little bit fatter of a wedge in and uh, hopefully get better compression. You can see I was sawing with unsupported grain, cracked the front of that tongue a little bit, but that'll be fine.
So, currently got a wedge made up. Um, a little bit of a chipping and stuff at the top here, but when it's fully seated, it's probably going to be only going that far. So, not too worried about it. Also, this axis for me. So, if a little bit of that is showing, I'm not really concerned. So, looks like it's pretty good for the start. Just got to thin it down a little bit front to back. So the handle is burnished. I didn't go crazy sanding it. Um, like I said, this one is for myself. It's going to be riding in the truck. Probably going to see some wear and tear. Um, and that's what I mean. There's still some tool marks in it. That's also fine. Um, feels good in the hand though, so. Left a lot of the thickness in the uh, tail end of it here. Thinned it down some more in the front, kind of behind the shoulder where it was really thick. But the you know, bottom half is already pretty, pretty well set. So, ready to do the final hang. Seat the wedge. All look good. Three pound, yeah, and the handle. Um, yeah, grandfather, uh, sludge pound. handler here. It's three pound. So, get this to the final seat. And if you're listening, you can hear it when that pitch changes, when uh, it kind of stopped making progress. Dude, I've got to set up here is hopefully get a little better lighting. Let's see. That's the only bit of curling I've got. But it's a super tight fit. All the way around. Which is good. Got some. Got some room in the eye. That's also good this uh, wedge in there and start driving it. I do have it marked where full depth of the kerf is, so hopefully we'll get some decent decent depth on it. Let's see why we wouldn't. trying to get it lined up. Sometimes when you start driving that wedge, you don't want it to start going in crooked because then it starts binding on the tongue there and you kind of get yourself in a little bit of a pickle. So you're trying to drive it in straight, making slow progress. That's good. Now that we've got the majority of it set, or seated the majority of the way, I'm gonna throw my little uh, leather protector on here. Really gonna trick and really, really so. drive it home with that. Hopefully I'm in frame. Maybe I'm not. It's drilling hammer, sledgehammer. Three pound hammer. So, we've got my little leather cup. 
going over the palm swell that's going on the concrete floor got my cut gloves you know this isn't sharp it's not so long to cut so and i take my boots and i pinch the end of that palm swell between my feet just so it doesn't try to walk around I take my heavy sledge and just start driving it try to get as good a compression as i can if you've got an eye that's cracked, you might want to do this because you're going to get a lot of pressure in there, but hopefully you get a good tight fit if you do. kind of feel it when it stops stops making progress but I'll take a pencil and I'll just draw a thin line where that wedge is going into the curve. Give it a couple more good hits. If it seems like it's, it hasn't made any more progress, I'll call it good. Um, I'm in upstate New York so it's really humid right now. I'm actually pouring rain outside. Um, so the humidity is fairly high. I don't mind that there's actually a little bit of room here before this wedge has bottomed out the curve because I'm going to leave this tongue proud. So if that humidity drops, which it will, um, I've got the opportunity to drive this wedge in at least another like, three eighths of an inch. So because I didn't glue it, because I'm not using a cross wedge, metal cross wedge, I've got the opportunity to drive that a little bit deeper in the future if the humidity changes and that, you know, this wood shrinks up a little bit. I can give it a couple wraps on the bottom of the palm swell. Hopefully it'll drop, jump the head just a little bit further down on the handle. And then I can reseat that wedge just a little bit deeper. If you've got a huge change in humidity, you might need to pull the wedge and drive a new one. But You can only work with what you got. I've got ideas of making a dehydrating chamber for it, but that's down the road. Use a heavy hammer, hopefully it'll get good enough pressure where it won't move. So that's still making a little bit of progress. So keep at it. Looks like we stopped there, so. Bring it a little closer, if you can see. So, that's how far we are from bottoming out. This is uh, some hard maple, silver maple, that I'm using for the wedge, so. I really like using the maple because it can take a really heavy beating. You can see the handles. The tongue's mushroomed out really nicely. Blade out, we've got good compression. I'm happy with it. So I'll trim this off, trim it off on the bandsaw, and uh, bring it back to the bench. I'm trying not to scratch up my freshly glued head, so. Try to clean it up a little bit. So one of the things I don't see talked about too much when uh, 
I see people hanging axes as uh, like grain orientation with the wedge. How much it matters, I'm not really sure, but what my line of thinking is, is this is my understanding, is the wood shrinks, expands, and contracts less um, in this direction, right? So it, I like putting my wedges or cutting my wedges with the grain orientation, which I believe this is quarter sawn. Um, it's not sawn, it's riven actually because I split it out of log. But regardless, uh, this direction would be quarter sawn with the uh, growth rings running in this direction. So it does a couple things. One, I believe the wood expands and contracts less. So the chances of your eye, your hand becoming loose due to your wedge shrinking, in theory, should be less. And also, wood wants to fracture or split along those growth rings. So, say your wedge isn't shaped perfectly, or whatever, and you've got you know more compression in the front, less compression in the back, your wedge might shear like here, like in the middle, and you might still be able to drive the back half of it, driving it in even deeper, thus getting better compression in the back half than the front half. So I don't really mind when a wedge splits. You know, as long as it's like in a controlled manner, I can continue to keep driving, you know, both halves respectively. Um, at least that's my line of thinking. Whether that's accurate or not, I don't know. Maybe it's all a bunch of BS, but at least that's, those are my thoughts on it. If you've got different thoughts, uh, let me know. And uh, let me know why you think differently, because I'd be very curious. Yeah, so happy with that hang, happy with how tight it is. So I know on the final clip I've usually got the uh, handle all oiled up and ready to go, but I did not do that this time because I'm thinking I may make a sheath for this, um, or mask. I think I want to do the style where it covers actually the whole head, kind of like how I did for the little uh, Craftsman's uh, Sportsman's Hatchet or Tackle Box Hatchet, Sounding Hatchet. Um, maybe that style where it wraps around and kind of tucks under the pole, closer up top, just because it is, I do plan on having this ride in the truck. So maybe I will, uh, maybe I will do a sheath build along with this. Before I oil the handle. The only reason I'm waiting on oiling the handle is I've got tomorrow off, so <laughs> off work, so I might do that, work on that sheath build. And I really don't want to wait for the handle to cure or the oil on the handle to cure prior to doing that. So hold off on oiling it for now. Once it's oiled, I'll definitely do an update on it. Because I also need to sharpen it at some point. So. But very happy with the hang, very happy with how it came out. Nice and tight. Balloon looks good. Took a couple swings and do the uh, test swings into the stump I've got in the garage here. I have a one that's real hard to split, so it's a good test of whether the hang's tight. You can really bury it in there and give it a good wiggle, see if it uh, moves. But yeah, passed, so hang feels tight. Hub looks good, in my opinion. Just, I always love a raft around a shorter handle. Those things just look so cool. So, yeah. so comment below. So let me know if you, you'd like to see a sheath build for this or if you just kind of want to see an uh, update with it oiled and you know, just a simple grind on it. Probably not going to do anything super deep. Um, just because this isn't really going to be like a designated like felling axe or chopping axe. It's really just probably do some do some splitting and ride in the back of the truck for when we go camping or something like that and end up wanting to split some uh, 
split some logs, but yeah. Let me know. And if you got an idea 